Welcome to BizWire. I'm Joseph Nordstrom in Beijing. China's state-run media lately has taken up the issue of reforming the country's state-owned enterprises, or SOEs, with most coverage, perhaps not surprisingly, praising the group of firms. Among ordinary people, however, SOEs are popular as a punching bag or a punch line about waste and corruption. Over the past decade, officials wanted to create huge state-owned champions like South Korea has done with Samsung that would be large enough to compete and perhaps dominate worldwide through the scale of their production and the size of their R&D budgets. This goal is still a work in progress, and time will tell if the project is successful, but the effects are tangible throughout China. SOEs often enjoy a monopoly position, which is one of their greatest advantages, and are also given government subsidies in various forms and have much easier access to credit than independent firms who often find themselves unable to find financing. Indeed, 85 percent of loans in 2009 were issued to SOEs because banks themselves are state-owned and are directed to let credit flow to other state-owned businesses. SOEs can get money more cheaply, paying lower rates for borrowing, and at least in the past faced less pressure about repaying their loans. In fact, SOE borrowing was a major source of non-performing loans in past crises. These structural advantages, among others, make it difficult for private enterprise to compete. Chinese citizens often have a dim view of SOEs. Some would say this is because of jealousy of the so-called iron rice bowl afforded to employees, but it is also in part because of flagrant spending and mismanagement. The Beijing News listed 10 SOEs that spent $470 billion on receptions in 2012, with China Railway Construction Corporation heading the list, spending $837 million, or 10 percent of its net profits. Stopping or slowing this type of practice has been a priority for President Xi Jinping since assuming office earlier this year. At the major government meetings last March, the railway industry, riddled with corruption and inefficiency for years, was restructured in the hope that the sector could be reformed. Another problem is that the managers of SOEs are rewarded for prestige projects not necessarily profit, and leaders of SOEs are appointed by the central government largely on a political basis rather than because of their business experience or acumen. Change will be difficult to implement as SOEs are happy with the status quo and are powerful opponents of economic reforms, slowing the action needed to move China's economy forward. Keith Bradshaw of the New York Times cites a political advisor as saying public support for economic reform makes it impossible for China's leaders to do nothing, but that reforms may be limited to the privatization of some manufacturers, like steel mills, which do not have monopolies and are plagued by problems like overcapacity, fierce competition, and heavy financial losses. Industries such as telecommunications, banking, healthcare, and electricity distribution will most likely not be targeted for reform. Even modest steps are facing significant resistance, including reluctance from local governments, which are often dependent on the profits of their local SOEs. Moreover, SOEs are a major source of jobs, and unemployment could bring more social unrest. Many say the key will be to move reforms ahead quickly enough to mitigate economic distortions, but slowly enough to avoid structural instability. Clearly, this will be a daunting but crucial task for new leaders Xi Jinping and Li Keqiang. This coming fall, we'll see the important government meeting called the Third Plenum, which back in 1978 Deng Xiaoping used to launch his reforms, and where Xi Jinping hopes to tap some of that spirit when leaders meet in the Great Hall of the People to discuss a wide range of issues, including what to do with their SOEs. You're watching BizWire on the Blue Ocean Network. Stay tuned for more in Economic Insight.